for the sake of our children, I implore each of you to be unyielding and inflexible in your opposition to drugs. Our young people are helping us lead the way. I was asked by a group of children what to do if they were offered drugs. And I answered, just say no. Uh, remember that, Nancy Reagan and the Just Say No campaign? Simple campaign, but we still remember it to this day. Uh, and uh, every first lady has a different imprint on the White House. We've talked a lot, of course, about the presidential race. We'll get back to whether uh, Donald Trump should compromise with Paul Ryan and the Mitt Romney wing of the Republican Party. Should he compromise? We're going to get back to those calls in just a moment. But we want to check in with our friend Andy Oak. He's the digital uh, editor at LifeZet, digital director at LifeZet, of course, our great website, which you should uh, have downloaded the app already. If you already haven't, please do. It's fabulous. And Andy is not just a digital whiz putting together our videos and our video productions, but he's also an expert on the first ladies, and uh, all of them are first mothers as well. And we have Mother's Day coming up Sunday. And his new book is called Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies, he joins us now. Andy, good to talk to you. How are you? Congrats on the book. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Fantastic to be here with you today. Um, Andy, so first of all, how did you become an expert on the First Ladies? <laughs> well, I, I was part of a production team for C-SPAN series First Ladies Influence and Image. And my specific job for that series was to travel to every library, museum, house, train station, church, school, any place I could get to that related to every first lady from Martha Washington to Michelle Obama. And when I got there, I basically had an all-access backstage pass to these amazing collections, things in vaults and drawers that they don't even let out for, for public consumption because they're too fragile. And they rolled out the red carpet for me, and it was just an amazing experience. Uh, so who's, who's the most, uh, well, what story was the most surprising to you? Which first lady had the most surprising background? You know, it, one of the most surprising things to come to be with with these first ladies is, is not so much the ones that were aspiring for it and the ones that were gunning for it and the ones that really supported their husbands, but the ones that went almost kicking and screaming to the White House that didn't want this kind of notoriety, that wanted a more private lifestyle, because we know even more today as, as you know, the, the camera is on them all the time. But, you know, there, there are things that you read in history books that you think, well, this might be romanticized or, you're, you know, maybe exaggerated a little bit, and then you get to a location and it's real. And I saw for Grace Coolidge and Calvin Coolidge, the way they met was in um, Northampton, Massachusetts, with a, a very romantic story about Calvin Coolidge looking out a second story window and mm -hmm. seeing Grace Coolidge down in a flower garden. And, you know, this is all just so flowery and nice and wonderful. And you think, well, it couldn't have really happened that way. And then I get there and you can see the room where Grace lived. You can see the window where Calvin would have looked out and seen her and the way the two met. So it's, it's, it's the way history jumps off the pages and out of these oil paintings. And these, these women and these presidents become real people. It was just fantastic. Uh, Michelle Obama was, a, was considered a controversial first lady. You know, first time I'm proud to be an American, all these the you know her work in the school lunch program and so forth and she did the let's move thing which was i guess kind of fun for people but um she by by no means was the most controversial when you look at the when you look at Eleanor Roosevelt and everything she did as a as, and pushed as a policy uh, policy matter um but i think you know we all sh we have all short historical memories when it comes to the first ladies Absolutely, and and Eleanor Roosevelt's story is is remarkable on on many levels. Of course, she's 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 the longest sitting first lady in three and a quarter terms, as FDR dies in, in soon after his his fourth term. But she's the reason FDR was a president. FDR was a mama's boy. His his mother Sarah called the shots, pulled the strings. Eleanor Roosevelt didn't even have a chair at her own dining room table in in the uh, Springwood Estate outside of uh, uh, in, in upstate New York, but. When he contracted polio, his mother, Sarah Roosevelt, was happy to have FDR just be a, a lord of a manor, and, and Eleanor would host teas and things like that. And his extramarital affairs were already out on the table at this point. She wanted a divorce. Sarah talked them into staying married, and Eleanor wouldn't wouldn't have, have blossomed as she did and get out if FDR had followed his mother's advice. So she hired a political consultant, got him out, got him back on the campaign trail, and, and that's how we have the longest sitting president, because she wanted to get out there and didn't want to be under the thumb of her mother-in-law. Mary Todd uh, Lincoln, of course, there's so much heartache in the Lincoln family, uh, so much yeah. uh, 
most obviously not just the assassination, but her own mental health. Uh, talk about that. Sure. You know, her son, Robert uh, Lincoln, gets a lot of grief for institutionalizing his mother. There was a lot of things they thought the Lincolns were broke and Mary was just out of control with money and things like that. Um, Very recently, actually, when I did the series, some new papers came to light that Mary Lincoln was living in Chicago at the time after her husband's death, after the White House and was having hallucinations of fire in her apartment. And it was not a first-story apartment. It was like, you know, third, fourth, fifth, you know, Mm -hmm. up in the air. And even back then, they knew when people hallucinated fire, they would try to escape the fire. So he was concerned for his mother's health, that she might try and jump out a window. And she was institutionalized, and women back then weren't even allowed to speak at their own trials and things like this. You know, obviously, we've come leaps and bounds from there. But when she got into the insane asylum, uh, Bellevue, outside of Chicago, and, and sort of got off the drugs that she was medicating herself with, or maybe doctors were medicating her improperly, she mellowed out a little bit. I mean, of course, there is that heartache that she lost. But we have to go back and think that from Martha Walker, Washington on up through even semi-modern times, people are losing children left and right. And it's really the stability of of how those mothers deal with it that allows them to go further uh, and be be a success and, and, and move forward. Uh, Andy, this is a fantastic bo- book. It's our uh, featured selection. It's a great Mother's Day gift uh, as well. And uh, all the moms uh, out there and, and uh, people who are, just feel like you know, it's nice to read something where you actually learn about America, the struggles of this country. It's not easy to be, uh, you know, to be in the spotlight today. And but even even, uh, you know, 150 years ago, it was a different, obviously, media climate. Uh, but the country faced so many challenges and the first ladies were really you know, played pivotal roles. And obviously, in many cases, the husband's first advisor. And uh, I think a lot of a lot of folks just kind of think it's all just ceremonial and it doesn't matter. It had a huge impact on uh, the way. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I say you're, you're absolutely right, Laura. From the very, very beginning, George Washington could not have done what he did to start this country without Martha Washington. She had the affairs settled at home. She had the money. She, Mark, George Washington, not her first husband. She lost her first husband. She was very young. She was a widow at 26, living in the colonies in the yep. 1700s, sitting on acre, I mean, thousands, 8,000 tobacco acres profitable that she had to manage as a 26-year-old woman in 1700. I, I mean, it's, it's remarkable to think. Abigail Adams, one of the most influence, influential first ladies of all times, giving her husband career advice, political advice. Uh, these women have been a strong driving force at the side of these men, if not publicly behind these men, from the absolute very beginning. And we, we, would, we would be a different country without them. Uh, Andy Oak here on the Laura Ingram show the book unusual for their time on the road with america's first ladies uh pick it up terrific book it's on our facebook page and laura the laura ingram show 